Hello and welcome. Well, we got news out of Holden from Australia. Also BMW and Toyota. Little look at a C7 that's already met its end. Uh, the cruise diesel's in the news and a brand new AMG model for Mercedes-Benz. First up on the list is the brand new Holden Commodore. Now, why are we showing the Holden Commodore? Well, apparently this is going to be a sneak peek at what the brand new Chevrolet SS is going to look like. Now, obviously the grilling will change and some other parts will change. Chances are this back end will be really, really close. Now, like I said, this vehicle just made its debut overseas. Now, it hasn't no real news as far as powertrain options or anything like that. Chevrolet may be wanting to do a one big lump deal where they're showing off the brand new SS coming up very soon in Daytona Beach as the 500 will be starting up very soon. So they're going to be showing off that car there. Chances are then Holden will be releasing a lot of the stuff. They didn't want to let the cat out of the bag maybe too quickly about drivetrain options and none the like. But little sneak peek at what quite possibly the SS could look like. Next up on the list, the BMW Z4. It's been around for a while, and it's actually gone through a couple of little iterations. Well, apparently the next generation BMW Z4 is going to be built on an all-new platform. That platform could quite possibly be the Toyota GT86. Now, if this sounds weird to you right off the bat, BMW and Toyota have actually got an alliance together where they're working on a new drivetrain platforms fuel-efficient platforms, hybrid-type platforms, so a lot of stuff that those two team, two groups are working on. Apparently, they may share a pallet when it comes to the new Z4, getting to work off the GT86, the FRS or BRZ platforms uh, here in the States. Also, this platform is going to be used supposedly for the next Toyota Supra, or the all-new Toyota Supra, as the last Toyota Supra has been years. I can't remember when the last one was. But, now we're going to talk about drivetrains. Hearing rumors that the Supra is supposed to get a twin turbocharged V6, that's not the word at least as far as the uh, next BMW. Hearing on the BMW side that it's going to be a hybrid drivetrain, going to have a 2 liter 4 cylinder engine mated with a hybrid electric setup. Now that thing's supposedly going to make, and I know a lot of you are probably groaning a little bit, but it's supposedly going to make around 400 brake horsepower. Sounds pretty tasty to me. Now, we're hearing now that quite possibly the new Supra could get a V6 hybrid drivetrain that will be somewhat north of 400 horsepower. So, we'll wait and see, and we'll keep you abreast if this deal actually flies or not, as it's kind of still in the rumor deal. It didn't make a whole lot of sense, but I thought it'd be worth talking about anyway. Next up on the list, well, that didn't take long. Look at this, brand new C7, hadn't even been on sale yet, and it's already been stuffed into a rock face. They've, you've probably seen this already. This has been all over the interwebs over the past several days. Um, this picture was taken out in Arizona. This vehicle was on a section of road that had a lot of twists and turns in it, a lot of guardrail type sections. And if you check down in the show notes and hit the link there, it'll take you to the Facebook page. It'll show you a lot more definition on how badly this automobile has been hurt. Because apparently, from what I hear, is the damage is very severe. Now, it has a lot of scuffs and scrapes up and down the driver's side. Is apparently, it careened off a set of guardrails and then into this rock face. The damage looks slight, but we're hearing the damage is pretty extensive. Also hearing conflicting rumors on what exactly was taking place with this automobile. Now, we know it was some sort of testing, but apparently it wasn't a GM engineer that did this. It was just an employee that's helping out the engineering group, which, in that case, he may be in a little bit of trouble. Um, but that may not be the case. We'll find out maybe never, maybe. But we may find out that this thing was an engineer's case, doing a little hot weather testing. Maybe got a little aggressive with the hot loud pedal. Uh, we'll wait and see and see what comes of this. But like I said, it's all over the interwebs right now. Next up. The Chevrolet Cruze Diesel came out in Chicago a couple of weeks ago, and we didn't have time to talk about it after the last show, but now we do. And it's got me a little bit on the disappointed side. I was really excited to hear what this vehicle was going to be, but as far as the pricing and the fuel economy numbers, it kind of got me scratching my head. Now, here's the trick. Uh, they're talking 42 miles of the gallon. Well, the Chevrolet Eco is supposedly get 42 miles a gallon on the highway, same as this car, and it's going to cost quite a bit less. 
So that doesn't make any sense. Not to mention $25,000 starting price for this vehicle. Um, you can get the Jetta diesel, I think, for less money than that. So that doesn't make very much sense. I think it's a couple three grand less. Now, Turk is that Golf, or that Jetta actually, may not have as much, you know, bells and whistles as the base price cruise. And that's probably going to be the case. But, I don't know. It's still less money. So, Turk is... I mean, as far as the Eco versus the diesel, is you can drive the diesel like you stole it, and you're going to have to hypermile the tar out of that Eco to try to even come up to reach that 42 mile a gallon. And the diesel, you could probably try to hypermile it and maybe get a couple of gallons more. So, I don't know. I was really hoping for it to get around 50 and for the pricing to be a little bit less, maybe only a couple of grand more off of the standard... Um, vehicle just for the diesel power plant. The trick is too, the diesel power plant is going to outlast this car by donkey's years really. So it's a good setup and hopefully it will catch on a little bit with the lack of the diesel rattle that these cars usually are known for and that huge plume of smoke that you still see some of the diesel pickup trucks rolling around with. This car makes neither, neither one of those. No big noises, very soft, comfortable, quiet. It's a great little package, especially if you're going to pack on the miles. Even with diesel fuel prices a little bit higher, I've heard one website claim that the diesel price is going to have to go up another dollar a gallon even to come up to the equals of uh, gasoline versus the diesel deal because the fuel economy is that good. So hopefully this thing sells great, but we'll have to wait and see. Last up on the list, this is a brand new automobile from Mercedes-Benz. going to be making its official debut soon. And it's the all-new A45 AMG. Now, to me, sadly, it's a little bit tuner car-ish. Especially because Mercedes is saying, we want to go after 30 to mid-40s males and females. Sounds kind of weird. I can't imagine... Well, maybe this guy owning this car, but I can't imagine a lot of people my age range wanting to go after something this small and I don't know we'll wait and see on this deal now the numbers sound fantastic two liter four cylinder engine forced induction I'm assuming to make this kind of power 360 brake horsepower is what they're hoping for 331 pounds feet of torque talking 0 to 62 numbers in 4.6 seconds now this thing will have a top speed of 155 miles an hour and that 2 liter engine will be mated up with a AMG speed shift 7 speed transmission and it's going to come with 4MATIC all wheel drive so it's clicking all the right boxes at least as far as I'm concerned but I just think maybe with the looks wise, obviously this is the entry level version to the AMG market or the entry level version of the Mercedes market, which always sounds like an oxymoron. If you're going to drive a Mercedes, would you really want to be seen in the entry level version? That's neither here nor there, but would be excited to drive this thing. With those kind of power numbers, this seems like this car would be right down the alley for me. But uh, we'll wait and see when this thing comes to uh, dealer showrooms. And I tell you what, if you want to run over and check out the Facebook page, the link's right down in the show notes, right down at the bottom here. Also, if you want to subscribe to the channel, you can do so at any time, and you'll get the first shot, the new shows as soon as they come out. And that's all there was that I thought was worth talking about for this week's Motor Cars Enthusiast. Thanks for watching. We'll see you again real soon.